So is this a great campsite or what? This has got to be the best campsite that we have ever had. We're right here on the beach. As you can see, the tide's out. And it's going to be, you could walk from here to that island over there. Probably a mile and a half or two miles when the tide's all the way down. And then when it comes up, let me show you. You can't see a single rock out there now. There's rocks everywhere. And they're up, some of them are up, got to be five feet. And they totally disappear. This one rock right down here, right here, that one you can just see the tip of it at high tide. So anyway, that's not what we're here about. That's our view. We'll do another video on this campsite. But we're here to meet uh, Pat and Chris from uh, Ohio. We met Pat and Chris today. They follow our channel and they, Chris wrote us an email a couple of weeks ago. She, I guess I mentioned in one of the videos that was going to be up in Maine, going to go to Bar Harbor. And so uh, she talked to Pat and said, hey, why don't we see if they want to meet up for lunch? And of course, you know us, we definitely want to meet up for lunch. And uh, so we did. And they're, not, they're a really awesome couple. They've been doing this a couple of months. Pat's never RV'd before. And Chris has, in a, with a previous life, she has owned several RVs. But uh, we've got a good video. You're going to love their RV when you see it. it. It's not your everyday Winnebago going down the road. It's a pretty special RV. So without further ado, here is uh, Chris and Pat. And oh, and same thing, Chris does all the driving just like Pearl does our driving. Chris does their driving. And Pat, they don't tow their car, they have a Jeep Wrangler. And Pat drives it and follows Chris. Chris drives the RV and uh, they're a can-do couple, I guarantee you. So anyway, here's Chris and Pat. Y'all kind of was telling us your story about Pat, you'd never RV'd. Correct. And Christina owned three, three or four, four RVs. Others. <laughs> and then tell us that story how the conversation come up about because y'all have only been married a few, a few oh, years just a, yeah we've only been married almost uh, eight years the longest now, eight years but... of my life is <laughs> it's gonna get longer is it <laughs> yeah, i'll be sleeping here tonight yeah <laughs> no, it could get shorter <laughs> yeah it could we, we joke about that all the time <laughs> and i you know in my past life um you know i loved rving and every weekend we would go and um and I just really missed it, you know, that part of our lives. And so I said to him, would you ever consider our, you know, getting an RV and RVing? He said, well, yeah, he's, you know, army guy. Of course he'd consider it. So, so he, you know, he said, yeah, let's, you, what, what would you look for? You've owned these things. What would you look for? And I said, well, you know, it would, it would be short, like 25 ish feet and, and it would have tons of water capacity and, and black water and gray water. And he's like, what's black water and gray water? <laughs> And I said, well, you need that because if you really want to go out, you know, then you can stay out a while and not have to dump and fill. And it would just, it'd be nice to have that. And he says, okay. So he's really good on the internet and finding things. And I'm, you know, kind of forgot about the conversation. And then one day he says, well, what do you think about this? And I said, what is that? And he said, well, it's, it's an RV and it's available. We can go look at it. I called the guy, you want to go and look at it? <laughs> he's like, where is it? Uh, you know, Michigan, an hour away. And it was this one here. It's this one. So we go up there, and the guy opens this big garage door, and, and we're waiting, and he pulls this thing out, and both of us are like, oh my gosh. <laughs> and I'm like, well, that isn't exactly what I had in mind. <laughs> I, knew but... it was, I knew it was going to belong to us that day, and I'm sure she probably <laughs> knew that that was going to happen, probably reluctantly. Yeah, but and I don't. I don't now, say did, no. did reality, you brought it up once and kind of forgot about it, and you found this, and y'all went and looked at one RV, and here you are. Yes. Yeah, That's we, smooth. Yeah. Some people he waste was, a couple of years. Good. He was good. You know, I'll be honest with you, you know, I'd been looking at ex expedition vehicles. This is what this thing is, really. Yes. And, you know, there's one made in the United States called Earth Roamer out in Colorado, and we kind of looked at those as well. But, uh, but you know, the guy that owns that company is, is a systems engineer, and, and that was the one thing that I guess I complained most 
The last RV I owned was a 1996, and I bought a brand new, a Pace Aerovision, yeah. and it had, wait for the, a slide out. <laughs> and that was like the first thing, and the thing we thought was, wow, is this going to be a problem? You know, and it was well built compared to, I think, what I'm hearing now in some of the horror stories, but. Um, but then when I saw this thing, and, and Earth Roamer is like it too, they do build a very durable vehicle, but you are paying for that quality. And I think by being the third owners, it just really helped the cost of it. Because this be was more like reasonable. a half million dollar rig. When it, it was. was. And originally. everybody was very gently used. I mean, the, the, the vehicle itself, there's less than 30,000 miles on it, and this is a 2008. So uh, we feel and like we got a, a, a really good deal. It, it seems to me, unique in did y'all want to watch a lot of youtube videos or something to, to if you've never rv'd he did. and this would be your first one that that he, is a big um, there's that I think. um website expedition portal uh-huh and you know he would look at at those and see what people are doing out there in their you know souped up jeeps and you know range rovers and things like that and and i would look at it too and i think man they really got to go to some really great places i've never heard of that. I'm used to the KOAs and, you know, the local, you know, private campgrounds. And to go to some of those places would really be a blast. We just want to get, and you know, another half mile down the road that a typical or you classic. Make sure that we there. don't get there. So we yeah. want to get a couple of miles past <laughs> Bob right. and Pearl. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's right. right. Bob and Pearl are back there, but, you know, we're over, we here, gotta by get this, it. Yeah, we're over here by this babbling stream. And <laughs> Did I hear you say earlier that you retired from the Army, you were a ranger? Uh, yeah, I'm an airborne ranger. Yes. Yeah, back in my slim. So that maybe days, that yeah. explains a little bit it does, of it, that yeah. you got a little bit. Yeah. And then y'all yeah. mentioned earlier about a photo you had that was looking at, and y'all were zip lining somewhere. Yes. So y'all so, bought this four years ago. Four years ago. You were both still working. Yeah. Still working. We uh, weren't able to use it a whole lot. Uh, I was working a lot of weekends. I was in information technology, IT. Uh, most of my projects entailed, you know, cutting over new sites uh, during weekends and that. So we didn't get to use it as much as we wanted to. Uh, so, you know, kind of this, as we started full-timing, that was our real first, you know, experience more than a day or two here and there. And the full-timing need you both kind of, you mentioned it, is that, that's all the discussion it took? I mean, it really was. Yeah. yeah, he I, was know, like, whatever. Yeah, yeah we're, I mean. we're pretty adventuresome. <laughs> oh, cool. you know? I think that whole, y'all said y'all were high school sweethearts and stuff. It seemed like that whole high school sweetheart thing is still in there. Like, you want RV? Yeah, that's good. Let's go. Yeah. Boom. Just boom, boom, boom. Like, exactly. So, it's pretty cool. Yeah, we, we're really enjoying it. You know, it's great, you know, to work so hard for 40 years, each of us, and now to be able to have this kind of freedom. Like, you know, what would we normally be doing? This is a Thursday we're doing this, but you know, we'd be at work. You know, and hating yep. every minute of it, yep. and and now it's kind of like, what do you want to do today? And the world's the limit. Yeah. And you talked about retirement itself. It's kind of you're having a hard time adapting to. I think that it's harder for me, especially since I've had a lot of RV experience, to adapt to the freedom of being retired and not feeling guilty more so than RVing. Cooking and all that, yeah, it's different, but it's just different, it, yeah. you know, just it's little, just different. Just a little. Then maybe we eat out more, maybe not. Maybe eat over a campfire where you couldn't at home, you know. But just the fact that I can get up in the morning and I don't have to put on my work clothes, put on my hair and makeup, and, and be up at five and ready to go. Right. and be on all day long. I can sit back and play some game for an hour and not have to worry. I and not feel guilty not about feel it either. guilty about it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's the cool part. Yeah. Just not ready to read a book because I still feel guilty about that. <laughs> <laughs> I've read several. So. He has. He has. If you have an adjusting, are you adjusting okay to retirement? It, that seems. I'm, you know, I've had a couple of times when I've gotten kind of a little, you know, homesick. You know, we our moms are both in their 80s and they're back back in Ohio. Daughter's back there with her husband. Uh, and no, our no granddaughter. grandkids. Yeah, we have a we have a grand beagle. Uh, our grand I was going to ask but, you, what'd you say? But uh, yeah, grand dog. I got it. <laughs> so, but I think as each day goes past, you know, it's it's it gets easier and easier. Plus, you know, we've got every possible way to communicate in today's modern world with FaceTime and you know all those modern conveniences that didn't exist 20 years ago. So now there isn't makes a day that easier. goes by that we don't talk to the family. Yeah. So at least, and with FaceTime, we can still see, you know. Because there seemed like a lot of folks that we've met late in the last six months that have that issue with 
mostly family, not so much friends, but family and leaving it usually involves three year old grandkids. Small yeah, this was a beagle that was hard to leave. My yeah. daughter, yeah. I'm sure she's going to watch us and go, I'm going to kill my dad. So your plan is kind of, okay, well, uh, over the internet, get to network a little bit with mom and oh, yeah. the kids and stuff. And then, if I remember right, you're going to maybe come home in the winter and... Well, we're yeah. probably next, I think next year we're going to make a swing back through Ohio and probably go up into Michigan, northern, the, the upper peninsula. You know, and you that. see that he's never seen pictured rocks and I've done a fair about a fair amount of snowmobiling in northern Michigan, so I've seen it in the winter, but I've never really seen it, experienced it in the summer, and he, of course, has not seen any of it. Yeah, we're going to head south for this winter. We're debating right now whether we want to go all the way to Florida or not. Right now, we're kind of thinking maybe Charleston, South Carolina, or even Savannah, Georgia might be warm enough for us people that are used, we don't care if it's a little bit cold. You know, we don't need 80 degree days every day. So, and this but is, you don't want your water frozen there at night exactly. either. But, you know, and everything is inside, so then, it's not like your normal. You hear four seasons RV, but most of them are three seasons, yeah. not mm -hmm. really four. This is really four. Exactly. It really is. Yeah. So, I mean, I think we're very fortunate, and why not take advantage of that? Why put the extra 800 miles on, you know, it and us when we, we could be just to. as comfortable exactly. as Unless you want to. Ours. Right. Yeah. Unless yeah. you want to. Right. So. You know, I'll be honest, I miss football season, so, you know, I think next year we may hang around home and, you know, maybe for the September, October, November time frame, watch a little football and then head south next year. You know, and we're talking, you know, 2019 going into 2020. So. And at some point we'll end up out west. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have an actual bucket list? Have you? We hadn't made a bucket list. We just kind of did a rough route of where we wanted to see. That's have that's kind of what we're doing. I mean, one of the, the bucket lists really was Maine. And, Maine was one and, for some and strange to reason. The fall. It Maine really drew us, and, and it and hasn't disappointed. It's been beautiful. Yeah. yeah. And we hadn't got to see it, but here in you, because y'all have been everywhere. Y'all gone. Yeah, we've been here almost three months since we left. Yeah. Yeah. You want to give a little plug? You you talked about you went to uh, our village rally, and you yes. really enjoyed it, and you're thinking about going to one. This one. Have, you want to tell yep. the folks a little bit about the We advantage? definitely loved it, and we um, already have our reservations for the next one. The next one is um, end of March at Swanee, yeah, uh, Live Oak, Florida. Live Oak, Florida. Yeah. Um, it's all over Facebook and our village, of course, and, and if you've never heard of our village, you know, it's just like a Facebook for all of us. And, um, and it gives us a chance to communicate and, you know, meet up and meet people like you guys. And um, it's just been really a great thing. And I think the rally, this particular rally, will probably be, since it's the second one, and I'm sure they've learned a lot from the first one, so there'll be a lot of improvements and it'll be a lot of fun. So the rally is going to be held when? The end of March, and I wish I had the date. I believe it's the 27th 20th. of March through the 31st. Or is it the 21st? Oh. 27th. But it's the letters are like RV, RV. Yes. Capital village. R, capital V. I-L-L-H-E, R village. Right. R village. And a fun kind of thing about it is you make friends on there. I don't do Facebook, but I know you make friends and stuff. Mm -hmm. But the key is as you travel, because we talked about in the previous videos, you meet like meeting new folks and then Maybe we'll see you again before we leave or something, but then y'all are going to go one way and we're going to go the other. And we say, oh, wow, they were such a neat couple, but they went the opposite direction. Well, y'all check in wherever y'all go next, and we check. So you kind of know where these friends of yours exactly. are at, and then you might kind of aim in that Circle direction and around, see them again. Right. Yeah, like, it, hey, where are fun. you headed next? And Because we don't care. Right. You know, we're and some traveling. things they've done, people have seen us check in somewhere, and they'll write, hey, don't forget to go to Willie's uh, Lobster Shack. It's great up there yes. just mm -hmm. off of this pulver. Because they've been there already, and so it's it's really a neat feature. If it you really hadn't checked is. into it, it it's yeah. worth doing. And I think that because you have the ability with our village to create specific groups, um, he's military retired, so there is a group out there for military um, people who will go to military fam camps. And so, hey, has anyone been to this fam camp where, where we've made a reservation? And fam camp is the RV uh, park that military people can stay at? On a military base? facility right. or it's owned by the military. And so... Act, active duty or retired. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, you can connect with those people. You may never see them, but they may recommend, oh yeah, but make sure you go into gate B. Yeah. Because gate A doesn't, it's closed right now. You know, it, it's just a great 
way to connect. Or park with in people. this section because there's shade trees or yes. there's whatever. Right. So, so it's, it's incredible communication. It is, and that's sure. what you lack when you're out on the road by yourself. So I yes. think it's great. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Curtis Coleman, one of the founders of our village, we got to spend at the rally last year in Elkhart, uh, Indiana. We got to spend two or three hours just talking to Curtis one night over a campfire, and he's just a really neat guy. He uh, used to be a member of the new Christie Minstrels uh, music oh, group, cool. and they're going to perform at this this year's rally uh, down in Florida. And uh, you know, we tend to be introverts, you know, and it, it helps us become more extroverted, which uh, it, it was fun. Yeah. And you know, the rally's going to be in March in Florida. Yes. In what mm -hmm. town? Live Oak. Well, we can look Live it up. Oak. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Okay. Live Oak. Just, yeah, in, uh, Google it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Internet is what Internet is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and the thing that I liked about it, because we're so new at this, we've never been to a rally, is that we went to this rally and this campground, and everyone there was there for the same purpose. Right. You come to like this campground, lovely campground, but nobody knows anybody, and unless they're in our villager, you know, and you know they're here, and you can say, "Hey, meet us," you know, for right. a campfire tonight. Um, then you can make those connections, and that's easy. But otherwise, it's just a campground, and everybody kind of stays to themselves. Yeah. Yeah, because everybody's trying to, you know, most people come to a campground, you know, for just a weekend. They're trying to decompress from their jobs and everything, and you don't want to go around and, and spoil their, their weekends. Uh, so, so it's, you know, the rally is more of a chance to, to come together. Everybody's exactly. going there because they want to. Same exactly. purpose. And then, yeah. and Curtis will have the firebugs or the firebirds Birds. there, yeah. which are these giant metal sculptures. They're absolutely beautiful, and um, they make, you know, they, they use them for barbecuing at some point, but in the beginning of it, when they're starting to get hot, they glow, and it's just. What does oh, it roughly good. cost for the rally? Um, four or five hundred bucks. No, I'm thinking was, more like three. It was about three hundred dollars. Four, four or five days of camping, or yes. three, three nights, four days, three nights. Okay. And um, you can get a full hookup. We don't really need a full hookup, so we just get water and electric usually. So it might be a little bit more. Yeah, and we boondocked at the one last year. Yeah, we, we boondocked. Fine, so. We were fine. Yeah, just a few days. Have y'all joined any of so our village? You know about? It. Is there any of the other RV groups and stuff that y'all have found beneficial as new RVers? We have not joined anything specifically at this point. How about point. like Passport America? Nothing yet. We're okay. still kind of, you know, trying to look out there what might be beneficial to us. Obviously, the the military family I camps forgot, yeah. are that's a big you know, a great benefit uh, to us. And we've also so. found just with this first real long stay what an advantage it is cost-wise to stay for a month the cost per night really reduces yeah. is it like a week's free you stay for a month you get yeah. roughly a week's that or at much, least yeah. so 25 percent discount oh, or maybe 60 half. 40. oh yeah. really oh, wow. it's that much and when when we're trying to be retirees and live on this new budget and this new lifestyle and this whole new mentality it's like how much can you afford and if you stay longer Stay longer, soak it up. What are you in a hurry for? Everyone says you're not on vacation. So not only do we get to soak it in and see the little red squirrels and you know enjoy the woodpeckers and um, and take multiple walks in Acadia National Park, but it's a lot cheaper. Yes. <laughs> you know, it makes it affordable. Kind of speaking of that, and you know, be as vague as you want, but what? Have y'all put any effort into coming up with the RV budget, projecting what you think you're going to try to? Much, much like you do, we, we, I do track our every, every penny of what we spend. I have a spreadsheet, you know, broken down in all the categories: groceries, medical, fuel, what have you. Uh, we're trying to live on my Army retirement pay. So far, we've done pretty well. We've, we've gone over budget a little bit, but we do have savings that we can dig into. So we'll talk about having what we call a zero day, a day when we don't spend any money. And so tomorrow's going to be a zero day, we'll tell ourselves. And if we make two more zero days, then that river cruise or that ocean cruise that we took that was a hundred bucks, you know, make yeah. up for it in a couple of those zero days in a month and then staying at the reduced campsite rate at a monthly rate. It's, it, we're learning. I mean, we didn't so join So y'all are 9,000 trails, trails, so you're no. paying everywhere you go. We're paying. Do you think doing the way y'all are doing, will y'all be, we're roughly in that low $40,000 a year? Is that ballpark of where y'all are right at? Right now, uh, my military retirement for a year is about $38,000. So we're trying to, try to stay within that, or, you know, give or take. So real close to? Bit. Yeah, the 40000 uh, I think 
Uh, when Chris, we're probably going to take Chris's Social Security uh, when she turns 62, a couple Which more years. Which is a couple more years before that will uh, happen. And I think that'll give us just a little bit more money to, to do more, a few more fun things. Uh, and, st and be able to take some of that and save it as well. Uh, yeah. So you got a pretty good unite, have a nice savings, so you got a comfort yeah, level. That's, that's our buffer. But you sure. still kind of think you can do it because a lot of people don't have that luxury right. and they're, they're, maybe they're wanting to start this a little early or something and they're wanting to know what can I do it and still have fun yeah. on. And, and that yeah. 35 to 45 is kind of seemed like the range you can do it for less than that and certainly more than that but yeah. you know and, and you're right and we as when we were working we enjoyed going out to eat but we didn't spend a lot of money in Toledo Ohio you know you can eat out pretty cheaply when you come here and you're looking at lobster dinners you're talking about $50 a dinner we did that a few times and thought hold your horses yeah. this can't continue yeah right. it's great and it's fun but we need to cook at home yeah. and we have the time so we just make more trips to the grocery store and make make it fun and it's just know? like you said you do these zero spin days two or three times and say I want to have a main lobster we're gonna do that once right so we're gonna eat some tuna fish sandwich today yeah, and exactly fried egg sandwich tomorrow and then we'll go have yeah, exactly. and what's wrong with that's that? what we do yeah. Well, yeah it works great exactly. yeah. besides you can't afford to consume all those calories you're gonna get in those big expensive meals and all that butter you've got to you know cut back somewhere yeah so so far you know we've really been tracking our expenses for this is our third month where I'm to the penny. I mean, we've been doing it a long time. I've been doing it for four or five years, but our real I, RV budget now, we're, I'm starting to get back into the, you know, you know every every penny we spend, I'm tracking it, and we can start to see what our trends are. You know, uh, you know, maybe we don't drive as far, uh, save on fuel, and stay in a place a little bit longer so that we can do more sightseeing. There's trade-offs everywhere. And, and the whole idea of boondocking, you know, what people say about not being able to get cell phone signal or Wi-Fi is, I, I feel that we, we enjoy having that. So, you know, having this vehicle, you would think, why are you in a campground? For Pete's sake, go enjoy the, you know, the wilderness. And we looked at a lot of wilderness sites. We took our Jeep out and checked a lot of them. And, they just don't have the cell phone signal, so we can't communicate with home, and we can't look at the. And that's an important thing that's with your. Important. Yeah. We have realized that that is something important to yeah. us. Well, it's yeah. highly important because of your folks and your daughter. Yeah. Yes. So yeah, it makes a world of difference. So I'm not going to ask you because you already are beat enough, so you're probably not surprised about too much, but. You hadn't done it before, and so now you've been doing it for a few months. Is there anything that really surprised you? Is it pretty much how you thought it would be? Is it better, worse, or you had it nailed? You know, it's a. I think it's a maturing experience for me. I, you know, I have I have ups and downs in terms of. You know, like I said, I'm missing football season right now. But okay. you know, with our connectivity, I've been able to watch you know all the games I've wanted to watch and things like that. You know, I got a little homesick a little bit. You know, being away from the moms and daughter, you know, take a little bit of getting used to. But I think you know, every day that's becoming less of an issue. We know we can talk to them every day. We know they're fine. Uh, you know, I'm able to watch all the college football I want at least while we're in civilization. How do you get TV? Just over the air? Uh, TV or we have an unlimited have Verizon data plan, so that's okay. typically how we're getting all our stuff. We haven't really turned on a local television station uh, since we left Toledo. How do you get your weather? Oh, your phone probably. Phones, yeah. Yeah. All the different apps. We've got iPads, weather Channel, computers, Fox Network. Laptops, um, yeah. We're well connected. So for you, yeah. the biggest thing for you is you miss a few things like family and your football. That's your two that's biggest That's kind things? of the, the biggest thing. Just How much traveling day? Is traveling day... Uh, Stressful or you look forward to it? Yeah, our traveling day isn't, you know, we haven't traveled for a while because we've been in Maine for three months. So, uh, I, you know, you kind of look forward to it. You know, you, you, but, you know, getting everything policed up, cleaned up, and packed up before you leave. And then, you know, when you get to the next site, you got to get it all back out again. But, you know, we are trying to follow the, you know, the, you know, drive less than 200 miles, stay at least two days where you're going next, and try to get there before two. That's the philosophy we're trying to follow. Uh, again, we're not in a race. We're, we want to take our time. You know, we don't we really have no place to be. The next place that we're really committed to is the rally. You know, at the end of March, of 2019. So, so you just kind of meander south, right? Yep. You know, if this place looks interesting, we'll we'll stay there for a few days. You both seem so happy, and it seems like you're in a sweet spot. It, it really are. makes me yeah. feel good yeah. talk, yeah. talking to y'all about it. Yeah, and the same thing with you all. I mean, it's it's great to meet people like you and uh, see others doing this and enjoying it. Do you watch a lot of the YouTube 
channel? Oh yeah, stuff? we do. Yeah. We do. Yeah. We've, we've watched, you know, tons of people. We, we came across you all fairly recently. Yeah, fairly And it's just recently. amazing that yeah. here we I are. I said, oh my there, gosh, they're coming here. talking to you guys and we, you know, hooked <laughs> up. Because so I think that what you are doing uh, with the whole expense thing is really helping because I think had I seen those, you know, like if you were doing it a year ago, I probably would have really been convinced, look, let's not try to do, do this. this on three. Let's just go ahead and plan for four and let's just figure out a way to budget that. If it means we work a little bit longer, then we do and have more in savings to get us until, and, and but now that we've seen that and we've experienced what we have so far, I think we know that a decision on my social security is probably going to be the best decision. Um, and that still so, seems to give you a nice Comfort zone. Plenty. You got your retirement, oh, yeah. your social security. You don't even have to touch that's anything just, else. Yeah, you know that's a pretty sweet spot. Oh yeah, we're we're in really good shape yeah. financially. I, we're ready because we what we want to do is we don't know how long we're going to do the full time RV lifestyle. We hope at least another ten years, but then also we figure we'll still be you know in our early to mid seventies maybe by that time, and perhaps then we'll do. Tra we want to continue to travel, but maybe it's more like a Viking River cruise. Where, yeah, yeah. You know, it's not as stressful on us so at that, that point. Fun so. And you can do that into your 80s. My exactly. gosh, they'll take you oh, in a wheelchair. The yeah. few cruises we've been on, there's a lot of. Yes. <laughs> but the perfect thing because yeah, everything's is. taken care of. They got right medical on. there and everything. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, but, and the food's wonderful. You know, <laughs> we're you know, right behind us. And we know, didn't have to cook it. Is <laughs> the woods? It's just uh -huh. great. Yes. Yeah. It's just great. Unfortunately, unfortunately, there's no bears or critters coming at that us. That we know of. They're probably back there somewhere. <laughs> so. Well, I want to tell you how much we appreciate you guys. Well, you shot us, one of y'all shot us an I email. Think I did, yep. but we always talk about it. it, it uh, for us, it's just so great. We constantly, somebody's shooting an email and saying, hey, you're in our area, we'd like to get together. For us, it's such a pleasure. And well, them and they, everybody's turned out to be just like y'all, just fun and excited. And most of them are kind of new at it. Yeah. So, and we're new at it. Sometimes they think like we have, we don't have any answers. We're just we're asking sharing. You. Somebody told us this, so we'll tell you what they told us. But it's a fun and fun learning thing. It's a great yes. lifestyle. And I think you can do it comfortably. Y'all seem to kind of agree, and several people have, that this 35 to 45 is a real sweet spot. You can do yeah. almost yeah. anything you want to. Yeah. And it, it, for me, it's kind of neat because y'all are not doing a thousand trails with the free campsites. Y'all are doing it in regular parks and still kind of fall into that. Right. right. I think you just have to be willing to stay longer. You know, and yeah. maybe some places, I mean, this area, Bar Harbor, has so much to do, it's easy. But if you're going to stay someplace maybe where there isn't a lot, yeah. you know, then you're going to be reading those books. And you definitely you know. would put a, a plug in for Maine. We really, oh my gosh. This is yeah. a really neat state. And I'm glad the people we came. and yeah. the whole East Coast. A, I, I thought the yeah. Northeast yeah. would be a bunch of rude and not yeah. pretty, but rude and obnoxious people. They've been wonderful. Oh, They're absolutely. Great. Really. Yeah. Yeah. It has yeah. been yeah. great. You know, my biggest, you asked me what was one of my concerns is, is like, I, you know, how are we going to top Maine as we head down the coast? And I'm sure we will, but, you know, this is definitely set, you know, at least a, a high set standard. A standard. I think we did the fun. same thing. We started in the Pacific Northwest, oh, which is gosh. almost as nice oh, yeah, as Maine. Right. Yep. And I They're thought that was a mistake because this is the best spot yeah. in the country yep. and it's That's only going to go worry. downhill. Yeah. But it hasn't. <laughs> yeah. it's We're a little bit disappointed in South Texas, but mostly the weather. Yeah. A lot uh, of nice people. But we've enjoyed it all the way down and then all, and I was raised in Texas and I saw a lot of stuff I hadn't seen before and then coming up here it's it's just a great it's, lifestyle. It's, it's we been a fantastic it. adventure. Yeah. It has. It really has. Well, we've taken up almost your whole day. We're going to get out <laughs> well, of your really campsite. We've really enjoyed it. No, it's been you. such we a pleasure to meet you in person. Oh, thank you so I'm much. I'm so glad you reached out. Yeah. That is awesome. Yeah. Thanks for sharing your story with our viewers. I know they yes. appreciate it as much as we do. Yes. We're going to kind of do an outside walk of this massive RV he's got here. And what is this called? This is a... We actually call it the Unicat. It was built, uh, the camper part was built by a company in Germany called the, called Unicat. And the uh, actual uh, vehicle part of it is an international vehicle that was built here in the U.S. So they shipped this vehicle over and had the camper part uh, custom built on the back. And it's one of a kind. It's the only one in the world like only it. One so. And it's, they made it in when? 20. 2000, this is a 2008. So it's 2008. 10 years old. And you've owned it for how long? We've had it for about four years. Four years, all right. It's got a little less than 30,000 miles on it, so it's gently used thus far until, you know, we get done with it. Stand eventually. up beside that tire. Give us some scale of how big this bad boy is. Look at that. 
And Chris was saying that you can drive it through four feet of water. You can. You could? It's, uh, it's, it's set up to do that. The uh, generator box on it is actually pressurized, so you can drive it through water and the generator will still continue to run if you've got the generator running as you're going down the road as well. So, so it obviously runs off of diesel, it's I'm diesel. guessing. And, and the generator also? Correct. Diesel. Yep. And it's 5,000 kW? 5,000 kW generator. It's a Fisher Panda generator, German generator. Okay. Uh, it's got 183 gallons worth of diesel on it, uh, about 83 gallons in the main tank, and there's two 50 gallon ox tanks on it. How far could you go with uh, your fuel, would you guess? Theoretically, we really don't know how much gas mileage we get. We're afraid. Probably 20 miles a gallon or no, something? No, we're probably more like, <laughs> if we're lucky, maybe seven or eight. Do so. you think you do that good? Let's, we might do that well. That's so good. We, we probably have a good thousand plus mile range on it if need be. So That's good. Enough to escape the zombies. So you have a, a winch in the front, and uh, I think I heard one of you say there was one in the back There's also. A winch in the back as well. So this is where the Fisher Panda is in the pressurized box. Now generator. what's a Fisher Panda? I've never heard that That's yeah, a It's a German marine uh, generator. It's mostly used on boats. Okay. But uh, a, lot of the, a lot of the components on this are built for, for boats, the pumps, and all those kinds of things. So air pressure inlet. Inlet? Inlet. Air so goes in there? We, we can put air through there really to, to winterize, to clean out the Oh, okay. The lines I got you. For, so. And then we got a gauge. What is that? That is the Wabasto. The oh. thing that you're looking at is... Like an aqua hot. Yeah, Wabasco. Exactly. It gives us radiant heat throughout the, the vehicle. So it's got a... There's a hot water that goes up underneath the bed so you can warm the bed up at night. Uh, oh, really? Also in the, the bathroom and also throughout the, the body of the vehicle itself. So it so. provides uh, hot water and it provides uh, water, ambient yeah. temperature. Right, radiant heat. Radiant heat. Yeah. And then warms your bed up. It warms your bed up. If oh, wow. <laughs> so, I haven't really tried it for the bed. And then this can this storage thing here. Yeah, we've got we've got a little bit of storage. That just storage room is all that is. Just a little storage room. I can open it up just to kind of give you an idea. Not a lot of storage, uh, obviously. We think we're living in uh, most of my tools are in here. Oh wow! So You're definitely using every inch of it, huh? We are. <laughs> so I I grabbed as much of my tools as I could uh, before I I left home, and they've come in handy here and there. And this. Just, uh, we got two five gallon uh, water cans on either side. Is that for uh, potable water? Potable water. Okay. Potable water in it. Mostly use it for washing our hands and that. Uh, the tools for the uh, the lug wrenches and stuff are stored inside here. Of course, our sewer hoses back here. I added that on. Uh, these are uh, ramps in case you get stuck. You stick them under the back oh. wheels and hopefully help get yourself out. We also use them to. Uh, to level ourselves out when we're not level. Does this have any kind of leveling system or you drive up on something to level it? We drive up on something okay. to level it by and large. And then this storage? This is storage. I added this, uh, you know, I put all my hoses and buckets and all those kinds of things back there just to give us some additional storage space. That's the other winch as you see back there. Let me see if I can get to it. And they're big enough winches to pull. That look pretty serious. Yeah, I think they're they're rated. At and you have is that a light or a camera? That is a backup camera. Back oh yeah. So it's got a backup camera. This is an interesting little device here. Uh, it's called a pull pal. Uh, there's a this and another piece that's on top of the roof. You can use it to self extract yourself. It's got a big spade blade on it, <laughs> and it'll dig in, and and you hook it to the winch, and it'll help you pull yourself out of situations. So are you saying you, you like drive that in the ground? Somehow I guess it'll it you kind of drive the spade blade into the ground and it'll eventually dig itself in as you're trying to pull yourself out. Oh, is so, this pulling the pressure pulling you out exactly. shoves that in the right. ground. If you don't have a tree or something else gotcha. to attach to and you find yourself in trouble, that's what it's used for. Again, when you hope it just stays there and looks pretty oh, and you yeah, never have to use it. Exactly, <laughs> exactly right. So we've got more fresh water over here. Correct. And more storage. more storage. So how much, what are your capacities on? You told us fuel was like 170 gallons. 183 of, gallons of fuel. You got 100 gallons of uh, fresh water in two 50 gallon tanks. I believe the black water tank is around 25 gallons and I think the, the gray water's 
similar to that, another 25 gallons. So that that seems a little bit, if I understood, 100, 180 of fresh, but it seemed like- 100 of fresh. 100 of fresh. Right. And it seemed like your storage would be more. In terms of- Well, if you got 100 of fresh, your usually your storage kind of adds up to about- To 100, yeah. yeah. Well, it is it is split up in kind of 50 gallons. This thing was designed to go off road. I'm not sure what the you know original intent was in terms of dumping. Obviously, we you know use dump stations and that. Uh -huh. I suppose if you were out in the oh, middle so of there, places where this goes the gray water, like in the old days, you dumped the gray just on the ground. On the ground, I would suspect that's what their thoughts yeah, were. Yeah, I think I, th I bet that makes sense. We don't do that, obviously. But. Right. So, is there anything? You looks like you have a couple of things. You have a spare tire up there. Spare tires up on the roof. And then tell us about that canopy on top. That's your bedroom, let me point it. That's the bedroom here. And then right here is uh, the roof to the bedroom. And there's two solar panels two on top of that. Two solar panels, uh, 120 uh, watts each. So about 240 watts of solar on this. It's about as much roof space, usable roof space as we've got. And then that panel, when you're laying in bed, that panel, you can lift it up. You can lift the whole thing up. and up, So it's facing up, stars, up 90 degrees. Correct, if you wanted to, and it also gives us the best access or easiest access to the roof. And you can sleep with that open point up 90 degrees and you're looking at the sun, I mean the moon and the stars. And yeah, exactly, or the bats or bugs coming down. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you said you got a net to put over there now. We though. do have a, yeah, we bought a, an insect net, mosquito net. Uh, so hopefully we'll get somewhere out where we can use that, where we're stargazing in that. So. So, do you have, you just started, tell us, I, I don't think you've said this yet, how long you've been on, you've been retired and full-time RV in about a few months? Really, we just, uh, really, we started on this trip around the 1st of June from Toledo, Ohio, and we've made our way to Maine, and we've been in Maine for the last three months. Really enjoyed Maine. I uh, feel like we've gotten to see a lot uh, in those three months. Uh huh. Do you, do you know what your general kind of RV lifestyle, philosophy, like, a while ago, Chris talked about maybe checking in with the Red Cross and maybe even volunteering for some of those. That, with a rig like this, I would think it'd be... Yeah, it's it's something we've talked about doing. Uh -huh. if, you know, if, for instance, the recent the Hurricane Florence, perhaps. You know, if, if people, if we could help the Red Cross out or help people in distress. Driving in four feet of water, I, I, it yeah. just seems like going and helping rescue people. It just, if, if you pretty do, awesome. Do, I'm sure it's capable of doing that. But for the fun part of it, do you, like is there a certain part of the countries you want to see or things you want? Well, eventually we're going to go, you know, we want to go all over, but uh, I think we've pretty much settled on the first two or three years. We want to stay on the East Coast, east of the Mississippi. Uh, a lot of that to stay, you know, a little bit closer connected to our family in Ohio. Uh, and there's still a lot to see on this side of the United States. And then eventually, you know, we'll get out to the, the West and start taking advantage of BLM land and things of that nature where this thing is really best suited for. Yeah, you know. courtside and all that exactly. stuff. Exactly. Uh, a couple more things. You can see okay. the ladder. Uh -huh. uh, it's interesting, the good German engineering here. This ladder accordion folds back up and fits in this little slot here. So it folds up and puts you put it away, stored. Okay. Um, a lot of interesting engineering in this, you know, typical typical German engineering. You see some of that as we go inside as well. And if you can see back here, it's got a full-size commercial uh, compressor on it, so we can, you know, air down the tires and air them back up. Uh, be self-sustainable in that regard. Now, do you have air brakes or disc brakes or what? It's disc brakes. Disc brakes. This. Okay. So that is just to have air. Just to have air, basically. And uh, the power, they has got the air seats in here as well that uh, we'll take a look at. Sometime. So does that run while your engine's running or do you have to switch to turn it off and it on? Will, it will come on automatically when you start the Oh, does it? And then it just stay, it holds your holding tank full of exactly. air pressure. Okay, gotcha. What else have we got? Of? Well, I don't know if you want to look inside. Maybe sure, I'm sure people would. Our back. Uh, we got it pretty full of different supplies here, so Chris will We kind of caught Pat off guard. We went and had lunch with him a while ago, and uh, the more I heard about their RV, I had to try to talk them into letting us come by, so we're kind of dropping in on them unexpected here. So you can see the Recaro chairs. Oh, yeah. It's one of the uses of the, the compressor. May I? Yes, certainly. Get up on in that baby. Oh, wow, yes! <laughs> 
There we go. All right. And just sitting here, it really feels like a nice pickup or truck or something. I mean, it's big and feels hefty, but it doesn't feel as uh, hard or as, uh, I'm not sure of the right word. It feels comfortable. How is it comfortable driving or is it? Yeah, it is. With those air seats, uh, they, they definitely help. I mean, it, you know, it's a truck. I mean, it's a, it's a truck and it drives like a truck, but the air seats certainly help. Uh, yeah, and you said it does okay on the mountains and stuff? It does. It does. You're pulling a lot of weight. We're about probably 25,000 pounds with the camper on it. And it's just you know, pretty close to capacity on this. This does have the beefed up uh, military chassis up underneath it. So it's a, uh, a little different than the commercial version of the, the MXT truck. Can you pop that? Is that easy to open? It, it is not. Okay, let's don't worry about that. I've got a... Yeah, yeah, that's okay. Special tool that I've got to take down the the okay the ramp and then the, to pop it up. So we can do it at some point today, Bob, if you wanted to. I can quickly show you the generator here as well. If that would be of interest. Is this 30 amp? It's 30 it's amp. 30 amp. I didn't see an air conditioner on top. Does it have? It air? does have an air conditioner, okay. a, a normal uh, Dometic. So here's your Fisher Panda generator. And there's a whole special cooling system up underneath the, the back of the wheel for this would, too. Yep. Okay. What is this right here? That's a uh, heat shield for, for the, pipe. Is that the muffler just so it doesn't yeah, get too hot I in there? Okay. Is. Gotcha. Okay. 5,000 kilowatt. So you probably have more than enough power. It's got uh, about, it's got four. Uh, 200 amp AGM batteries. So we got about 800 amp hours of power, wow. or you know, short or uh, battery power. It's yeah, interesting yeah. when we had the this thing weighed on each of the tires, uh, the balance was almost perfect on it. Amazingly, in the way the Germans engineered. So like 80, 200 pounds on each wheel, yeah, or something. And so your, or whatever your water it was. on this side offsets the the weight of the batteries on the other side. Yeah. So it's. it's it's pretty interesting. The so you had a four-point weigh-in at, at the RV, or RV, R Village? Our, at the R Village Rally. Rally, okay. And uh, and the balance came out, you know, the guy was pretty amazed at how balanced this thing was. <laughs> okay, see, not too bad. Look at her, she's ready. Yeah, she, no there's no doubt about she's that. Ready. She She stays in the ready mode. This is comfortable. It is comfortable, isn't it? Yeah. Wow. This is very comfortable. Oh my goodness. Yeah, a person could get used to this. Yes, indeed. <laughs> wow. That's cool. And I like the way all your gizmos are over here. Primarily. Kind of wraps around you, huh? Yeah, it does. How neat. That's cool. And that seat goes up. So you don't ever have to feel like you can't see. Oh, right. Oh, you can push a button and raise yeah. it up or it's going? Yeah, the air compressor. Yeah, yeah, the air compressor has to be on. There yeah. might be enough in it, I don't know. Yeah, there's not enough air. How far up does it go? Oh, it'll go up a long way. A long, a long way. Uncomfortably Even tall. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Of course, well, I can get out of the way. That way Bob can get out. I've already been in. Yeah, that's why I'm going to just turn it one just a little bit to the right. Is that the fuel pump? So that's, the, that's your air compressor. Air compressor, oh. raising the back. That's not nice. That's a good one. Better keep an eye on her, Jimmy. <laughs> now you drive it too, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. Do you do most of the driving? I do. Yeah. I don't trust it. Was it, was it, uh, oh. oh, it's going up? <laughs> this is nice. That's quite a bit. Isn't that nice? Does it have lumbar in there yeah. too? Does it? Did you hear that, Tweety? It has air lumbar too.
get out. Get oh, yeah, it might be, huh? Yeah. <laughs> so, you said you do most of the driving, Chris? For sure. So far, I have been. Well, when we picked it up, Pat had never driven an RV before, and so he looked at me and said, so here's the keys, and I said, wait a minute, what? And he says, well, I've never driven an RV, so I got to be the first one to drive it home. Pulled into a parking lot, I don't know if you remember this, and I had no idea of the turning radius. It was a big parking lot, but I cranked it, and the turning radius isn't like the Jeep. <laughs> Almost hit some guy, because oh. <laughs> I thought it would turn sharper. <laughs> So how is it making turns? It's not huge it's, long. It's not long. And is it hard to it's make? Better than uh, the 36 foot Class A. Okay, so it's easier. So it's then. much okay. easier. But it isn't a Jeep, you know. I mean, yeah. <laughs> it is 25 really? feet long after all. That is cool. But, that is just. And then you follow along in the Jeep. Yeah, Wagoneer? I do. And y'all yeah. communicate with walkie talkies or we cell do. phone yeah, or we what? Have our little uh, walkie talkies. Exactly, and that's worked out well. You know, if I feel like, uh, you know, I need to get up and run interference for Chris up front to get over a lane. Oh, or yeah, like yeah. It helps. Yeah, we've decided not to tow for the time being, but it certainly could tow. So. That's the way, uh, so Jeff and Laura, that's how they do it, They with walkie-talkies. And she follows in the car and he yes. drives the RV. Yes. And they, li they like it. Yeah. Although Lori hadn't got to ride, she's got to ride from the office to one she campsite. So like yeah. a oh, half of a mile is the only time she's even got to ride so far. So she wants to get a tow set up so she can ride yes. in the RV. Yes. Towing is really nice because you can have that conversation <coughs> yes. as you're driving. But. Yes. And everybody needs a backseat yeah. driver. Us yeah, backseat right. drivers play a unique role. We're needed. <laughs> you know me. She'll do better than I did, <laughs> Yeah, this is the one thing about this camper. <laughs> The steps are interesting. So welcome to our humble abode. It is, this is very cozy. It is wonderfully put together. Those this Germans know how to engineer. So back here we have a dinette um, and it the table can come down um, and the cushions can slide forward and it will become like a super twin bed. So. Um, but a basically, super twin, kind of like a wider, wider than, than a normal, normal twin. twin. Okay. Um, the windows are amazing to me in this. They, they're great. They really are solid. I mean, they're double pane. The the um, and I'll jump up there and actually, yeah, I'll jump up here and show right. you um, how cool this is. So if you're looking at this, the screen is magnetic. Oh, I'll be darned. And if we want pure darkness, oh, how cool. And if you need to close the window, you raise this, grab that, and, and then it locks, and it in, locks place. in place. Now, all the so windows are that way? All the they windows all are that way. Wow. Yes, it's just amazing, the stability and, you know, oh, and the weatherproof uh, of the whole thing. Just, it's just oh, really It just neat. looks like it's incredibly weatherproof. really is. We've not had any issues at all. I like the idea that that drops down and you can wash the interior of the window yes, with no problems I know, whatsoever. I know. And That's I thought perfect. since we have that box on the back, there might be times when we're camping for a long time and I want to have a plant or something. Oh. Or the Wi-Fi Ranger or, you know, uh, an outdoor antenna. You can reach right out that window and set it right there with exactly. a suction cup. And it's just so easy. They included a flashlight that is always there and ready to go. Oh, charging? Charging. So that's kind of cool. Nice. Now what's interesting about this unit is it is completely four season. So the water, both of the fresh water tanks and all of the gray and black are inside the coach. So if you were to take these cushions off, you'd unscrew this whole thing and you'd see the 250 gallon water tanks sitting here inside. Mm -hmm. Over here are all the batteries, the AGMs, oh. there's four of those, and a generator battery, all inside. And there's our heat. So the heat source is hot water, a German radiant heat the system. The Wabasco thing? The Wabasco, yeah. yep. That and here's so our cool. panel of all of our different settings. Was it all labeled up? Is these it, circuit it was, breakers? Um, yes. Well, essentially, they're on off buttons. But oh, okay. In a way, yes, they are the circuit breakers, as are these buttons. So if we need to turn off the refrigerator, for example, just pop that and off it goes. Um, so it's very easy. It is just so cool. 
And then storage and storage? Storage. This is where a battery is, so this is the only storage here. Okay. And this is an outside light, so it's really easy to get to. Now, the interesting thing is you might ask, where are your clothes? Where are your clothes? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> and they're in here. Oh. And well, also, that's like... and of course these lock for travel. But then these are all of our folded clothes. Now, this is that, and that's then a removable drawer. And then you can reach way back there, and there's another one. Would oh, you, really? Would you? Should, yep. So kind of like season, put your winter back there and your spring out here, or Absolutely. whatever. Absolutely. Oh, wow. Is that some of your Isn't German that? engineering stuff? And they're still making in this way. And the neat can. part about it is they're not even on runner rollers. So if you want the shirt that's way back at the back, do you have to take all those off, or is there a magic trick to that? I just, I just reach back and grab it. Okay. <laughs> it would be nice. Well, it wouldn't have surprised me if there wasn't some magic trick and it flipped <laughs> around know, or something. I think. And okay. I like the way that they didn't waste this space. Uh huh. I mean, I have a ton of jackets and things stuffed up there. I don't know where those Perfect. would go. And is that a TV? This is a TV. How clever is that? They have the electrical connection here. And here <laughs> is a panel where if you want to block off the cab of the truck from the camper, you can do that. And, and that this, is below the ladder? And it's below the ladder. Okay. Oh, don't you dare fall down. Yeah, that'd be rough. Yeah, those are not easy don't steps. Don't you dare. So then, we have the bathroom. And it is a dry bathroom, so the shower is separate from the commode. Uh-huh. Our camper was a wet, and it was a And I think unique. they would have saved a lot of space if they went that route. Not exactly sure why they didn't. Maybe they felt the demand was for a dry, but... I love it. And it's got the heat inside, so you run the Webasto heating system and you can throw your towels over that and they'll dry. And that is so. storage space underneath? And that is storage under there and that whole glass mirror is behind there storage. is just all kinds of storage. Oh, cool. So I can fit all the extra toilet paper and everything inside the bathroom. How nice. That is just nice. Are all the lights, are they LED? They're all LEDs. Are they? Mm -hmm. And they came that way. You they didn't, came that yeah. way. Yeah. Okay. Now we added these because we're not oh. sure oh, wow. <laughs> about. They're just cheap little. Do things. that again. I did. <laughs> and like sometimes red is nice at night, so it doesn't blind you if you're, you know, getting up to use the restroom or something. Yeah. But you know, if you're on, and if you don't want to run the generator and you don't, and you're running low on power and yeah. It's I need to get bad, you that right? for Christmas so you can, if you're in a bad mood, you can turn on the red. Let you, let you, know. I'm coming around, you're on the right track, you can give me a blue. <laughs> I'll give you a green if you're on the right track. Come give me some sugar baby and light green. Huh? <laughs> I think I'm going to look, look for those. Look at these. Look at these. Now, is that in the lock position? Um, turn it to the left. That Okay. Now, this and is unlocked. Out. Look at that. That's a big drawer. Yep. Now, this is their silverware drawer. My silverware drawer is like this. That's see, that's the bad part about doing these walkthroughs is she gets off. Oh, oh, I need one of that. Did you idea. see what Christine had? I want one of those. <laughs> <laughs> so how is cooking? It looks like you've got everything you need. Are you a cook? Do you cook a lot or do you all um, eat out a lot? Or? I'm learning to cook more now that I have more time with uh -huh. working. You know, you just don't have the time. But what's neat is what they did here. You know, I use this a lot as a prep table, but they have this huge three-foot part that comes up here and locks into place oh, okay and now i have a really good sturdy table to yes. prep food or you know yes um put d d dry dishes or you know look at this so it's nice well that's like a bar it is all the bars that had those yeah got it here in ellsworth <laughs> and do you use stuff? Is that to dry off after you uh, let stuff drip you know, dry stuff, or um, just to? It's that there's this when we got this. I'm like, well, there's that space, you know, and I don't want to waste that space. But I, but with this cooktop here, there's a ledge, and then this is low. So we found that, and it brings it right to the edge, and it allows us to not have a chance of chipping this edge or right. anything. And then, and it, you know, it's just a place that to. Is cool. 
put things. That's what all you got great. hanging? I see stuff hanging from the ceiling in the bedroom. Well, a lot of times. Do you use night, it like to work or read? To watch or is that what it is? the iPad. So, oh, okay. You know, Pat will. You know. So you like read a book on the iPad? Yes. Now yep. that I like that. Yep. And we got those here, here in town. Um, at that. Oh, you've got a couple there. of them. Yeah. Yes. At, where? So at that. Um, I have to tell you, it starts with an M. I want to say Menards, but it's not Menards. Martins. Martins. They're only in Maine, and they buy closeouts and things. Wow. So, so yeah, this is the ceiling. There. If you was back here, yeah, you can climb up there. You can and push. That ceiling unlocks on either side, and it's not light. Um, I could probably push it up myself, but I usually have Pat to help me if we want to raise it. And then that whole roof goes straight up. I mean, there's enough room in there. We sit up in there, no problem. So there's like a latch that you just yep. flip? Yep, on either side, on your left and right, those big metal. Oh, okay. Those on I can do that? And, yeah, you probably won't be able to, but I mean, not that you won't be able to, it's just, let me see the- Well, you got all that other stuff, stuff hanging down. Hanging so there, I'll just tell them. So there's a latch right here. You flip this latch. Yep. And then this one right over here. And then this whole roof just raises up and you're looking at the moon. And also, it g helps you gain access to the roof. Yeah, so, that, yeah. I was wondering where, that uh, earlier, and he said that's the main way to get to the yeah, roof. Yeah, we don't have to have a ladder on the outside because the ladder's right there. What's on that side of this one? Oh, back That's the shower. shower. Yeah. Yep. You got yourself in there, James? Get yeah. yourself out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then the standard micro convection and refrigerator. They are. That's refrigerator. Do you yeah. know the cubic feet? Like I don't. Three or it's five or fifteen? Or I would think four. Four? four. It's not huge. You know, you go to the store. But y'all found that it, it's adequate for two people. It's, oh, yeah. yeah. Adequate for two people. Yeah. And we use more canned goods than I have ever used. Um, rather than well, fresh. I got to tell you, Pat and Chris are really a fun couple. We sure enjoyed uh, visiting with them and want to thank them for letting us come over and spend the afternoon with them and get to know them a little bit that uh, expedition vehicle they've got is something else I would love to meet it back up with them here in a year or so and just see where all they've been and what all they've done. done. I know they're going to have some exciting stories. So if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. And uh, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, consider subscribing. If you got a comment, leave them down there. Uh, we scrolled through the list of all the options on the expedition vehicle. And uh, I think Pat's email is at the top of that if you want to send him an email and you got some specific questions. As you can see, the water's come up a little bit since I went and did some editing. It's starting to rain, so I'm going to have to call this, end it right here. Besides that, keep the wheels rolling. Stay safe. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye, folks.